you do in five minutes? We have five minutes. What would you do if you had five minutes? Each one of us can, you know, close their eyes and think, if I had five minutes, what would I do? So some people would like to do some medication, meditation, some will drink water, some will stretch, but I propose something else. At Stordot, we allow you to charge your car in five minutes. And in order to charge your car in five minutes, we have had to totally reinvent the battery. The battery of the car is the bottleneck of the adoption of electric vehicles because it's inconvenient to charge overnight. Or it, you know, not everybody even have a garage to charge overnight. So we are right in this perfect storm of fast charging where basically the connected car and the shared uh, riding and the autonomous are all happening. But for this to really take on in a serious way, people need the convenience and the, the lack of anxiety in charging in five minutes. And this is our goal and this is what we are doing. So um, th this is not an easy task. We've already invested uh, about a hundred uh, man years of R&D into the research of these new materials. These are novel materials that are a combination of some organic material that is new, that was never used before, and some in inorganic particles, let's say uh, silicon, uh, and other materials that, uh, that are known to be uh, with good energy density. So what we were able to show for the first time ever, and this is how we uh, obtained a recent uh, investment from Daimler for about uh, $60 million, uh, is we took one cell of electric vehicle that we had produced in our labs. This is just one cell. It's not the entire pack of, let's say, all the chassis of a Tesla. We took one of these 400 cells that is in there. We took a charging station. Now, this has to be a very powerful charging station. This is not even your uh, supercharger of Tesla, which is 120 kilowatt. We are talking 350, 400, 500, and more of kilowatt that is going into the car, which is very serious and very new, but there are already charging stations like that that show the feasibility of that. And with that, we did the five-minute charging of the cell. Now, if you can charge one cell, you can charge the entire pack. Same goes for the phone, by the way. You can charge your phone in five minutes or even in one minute. The chemistry of the battery is the, uh, what allows you to charge fast. Okay, it's not the, only the charger, it's not only the connector, it's not only the materials, it's the entire battery set with the new chemistry and new physics that allow you to charge fast. When this short video is over, your electric car will already be well on its way to a complete charge. Here's how StoreDot's groundbreaking five minute full electric vehicle charging works. This pouch contains StoreDot's flash battery technology with nanomaterials in a layered structure and proprietary organic compounds, representing a radical improvement over the traditional lithium-ion battery structure. Together with additional pouches, it makes up a charging module. Forty such modules are placed in the car's chassis and connect to its battery management system. The flash battery technology allows for unprecedented charging rates. Within five minutes of charging, the car is fully charged and ready to go. Five minutes that just bought you an average of 300 miles. Store dot. So in five minutes, what we have done is that we have shown that the, the power that is being supplied to the charging station can be accepted by the materials that are new materials that are in, inside the battery. So we call this a flash battery. This is a flash battery uh, technology that allows to take this 350 kilowatt plus power and absorb it into uh, the, the battery like, like in a sponge. Also, the issue of safety is increased because we do not use graphite. In traditional batteries, and this is like the Note 7 story and, and the likes, if you use graphite and you're trying to charge it fast, you have the risk of thermal runaway. You have the risk that there'll be some metallization, some plating, it's called, between the lithium and the graphite. So in, in our batteries, there is no 
graphite at all. So it's important to understand that you know when people tell you that they charge fast, need to, including the phone, by the way, this cannot happen with the existing technology of batteries. Something fundamental needs to change. And this is what Stordot is doing. So we are innovating materials like you do in a drug discovery or like you would do in a biotech. But instead of, let's say, uh, looking for a vaccine for Ebola or Zika or what have you, we are looking for new materials that will move the ions faster and will be safer with less resistance, with higher temperature of combustion uh, inside the battery. So in order to do that, we really had to invest seriously in a state-of-the-art laboratory in Israel. Uh, and uh, whoever comes to Israel is, is welcome to visit us. Uh, this is really a very unique facility that combines the nanotechnology together with the organic chemistry that uh, these materials are synthesized together in order to allow for uh, the battery to be able to charge fast. So we are working in, in six teams because we are totally re-innovating the battery. So in a battery, you have an anode, which is the negative side, and a cathode, which is the positive. You have the electrolyte for the charge transfer. You have the structure of the battery. You have the electronics. You have the charging stations. You have the manufacturing itself. Each one of these teams is headed by uh, a top scientist, uh, people that have published papers in, in, uh, in uh, Nature and, and publications like that, coming from Berkeley, from MIT, from Moscow, from London, from Germany. We have collected them from around the world. Each one is an expert in his field, and he's totally redesigning that element of the battery. And then we have a system team, exactly as you do in software. We have to take the system and make it work together. Just to give you a flavor of what we are doing, for example, in the anode, we are talking ab about a gradient layered material, meaning that you have coating of the active material. Let's, we took the example of silicon. So let's say you have a 100 uh, nanometer sized particle of a silicon. But if you will charge it fast, it will inflate and it will crack. What we did is we created these materials that coat this nanoparticle and protect it during the charging. So this is like a buffer zone. And you have here the image of how it looks under a scanning electron microscope, showing the buffering zone for the active material uh, with the uh, nanomaterial combined. Also, we have several patents. We have a total of uh, 15 and another 25 in process that show uh, the uh, way that we structure the relationship between the anode and the cathode in a way that allows the functional compounds to be uh, safe and reactive during uh, the charging. As I mentioned, this is a safer battery by essence because we do not use graphite. And there is no metallization, and, uh, so no plating. So no dendrites. Dendrites is those nails that puncture a hole through the separator from an anode to a cathode. We do not have this phenomena at all. So we also need to think about what is needed in the infrastructure, because the battery was the piece that was missing. Now that Stordot has shown to the world that this is possible, a lot of other things need, need to happen. And for that, we are very happy to work with Daimler and others on the entire ecosystem, where you need to solve the problem of charging at home, which is an AC charging, which typically will be slow charging because people don't have in their neighborhood the infrastructure for fast charging. At the same time, you have the DC charging stations uh, in airports or in anywhere in the city. So you can think about all these uh, gas stations that you see around the city today. In 10 years, they'll be redundant. All the charging stations that we see, all the gas stations that we see, nobody would need them. Because you, know, you will not be even allowed, let's say in China, in 10, 15 years, there will be no combustion engine at all. So what do we do with all the gas stations? This gas station essentially become a charging station. But in order for it to become a charging station, you need the infrastructure. You need the grid. You need it to be smart. You need to work with the government. You need to work with the electric company. So all this we've uh, already started to do. Few words about standards. You know, nobody thought that charging can be so fast. So we are pushing in the standard bodies in, in Europe, in the, in the US, 
uh, for each 100 kilometers, now three to five minute charging, and the next generation is one to two minutes of charging. For that, you would need about half a megawatt of a charging station. And this is very serious, and this is why we cannot do this alone. I mentioned the IP. We are looking at the car as a mobile device. A car is, the car is connected like your phone. It, it is autonomous. It's already semi-autonomous. It will be fully autonomous very soon. Uh, it is smart, and it needs to be dealt with when you charge it fast. It needs to be dealt with like you deal with your phone. So we have a full set of IP portfolio that covers all the aspects of the mobile device, which is the car. So here we had a little bit more than five minutes, but I can assure you that in these five minutes, your car is fully charged, you had your coffee, you drank your water, and you're ready to go for another 300 kilometers. So thank you very much.